Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and a video right here on NoDQ.com. And many of you are also watching from the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NoDQCAW. And also No DQ and a videos affiliate, ringsidenews.com. Got your questions here from spring.me slash Aaron Rift. So let's get started with the first one today from Joey Jojo. Do you think Kane will be taking time off after payback? And do you even think he'll possibly retire after payback? I could definitely see Kane taking some time off after payback. You have the See No Evil movie that is coming out soon, and he'll obviously be doing promotional work for that, although I'm not sure if he'll be needing to take that much time off. But regardless of the case, I do think that you need to sell the Buried Alive stipulation. You need to have something happen where Kane has gone for a while because you had the Extreme Rules match, Daniel Bryan beat Kane, and then Kane just sat right back up. So whatever happens with Daniel Bryan and Kane, Daniel Bryan needs to decisively finish off Kane, if not for good, at least for a while. So I do think Kane should take some time off. And regarding the future of the character, I definitely see Kane coming back with the See No Evil movie coming out. But as I mentioned in previous videos, I, I really think that it's getting close to time to put Kane into retirement and then let that character be finished and, and wrap things up with, with Kane and uh, let Glenn Jacobs retire the character with dignity. Because right now, I mean, if they keep doing the, the storyline that they're doing, uh, the, the thing is a lot of people cannot take Kane seriously at this point because he's been through so many heel turns and face turns and he was doing Team Hell No and... Then he became corporate Kane, and he, he's had so many different things going on that it, it's hard to take him serious as a monster heel. And uh, if they keep doing the types of segments that they were doing on Raw that were very over the top and just ridiculous, um, you know, I, I just think that you, you need to do something so Kane has a, a good send off. And I, I don't know what that is exactly, but maybe give him some time off and then let him come back and, and have one more big match and then call it a career. So. Well, we'll see what happens in the next several months or even year. Uh, maybe by WrestleMania 31, they can retire the Kane character once and for all. All right, this one comes from D King 408 Hey, Aaron, what do you think of Paige's WWE run so far? From my point of view, I think she would be better as a heel. Well, so far, it's had mixed results. She had her first big pay-per-view match at Extreme Rules and... I give her credit for having a decent match, but the crowd just did not care at all. And there was nothing that her or Tamina Snuka could do because they were in the death spot on the card and the crowd was just completely burned out and, you know, it sucked for them. Um, in a few weeks, it'll be interesting when, when WWE goes to the UK. I'm sure that she'll get a much better reaction there. And, you know, she was off to a good start, you know, debuting her the night after WrestleMania. That was a good place to do it because a lot of those fans knew who she was. But obviously not everybody watches NXT and a lot of casual fans still are getting used to her and, and are just being introduced to her character. So, you know, WWE needs to keep letting her go out there and just uh, be a dominant champion and, and establish her with the uh, the overall WWE universe and, and uh you know, I, I think she'll go far. I do think she'll have a, a good run in WWE. All right, this one comes from John D. 65. Isn't it past the time for another Mark Henry heel turn? Well, I think as long as Mark Henry is not being pushed hard, then it's really not necessary to turn him. If you're going to turn him heel again, then that means another Mark Henry push. And uh, as much as I did enjoy the whole money in the bank angle he did with John Cena where he faked his retirement. Um, you know, I wouldn't be a big fan of another heel turn at this point. So uh, I think that as long as he's going to be in the spot he's at where he's in that mid card and he's putting over the younger talent, then he might as well just stay a baby face because turning him heel would, would just be too much at this point. But yeah, I mean, it, it is overdue at the rate that they've been turning him. That's for sure. All right, this one comes from Nower to Johnny. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that name, but here, here's the question. 
Hey Aaron, did you watch the tribute that WWE made to Connor the Crusher? And what did you think of it, if so? I saw it, and um, it was one of the most emotional pieces that WWE has ever put together. Um, it, it's hard not to be moved by that video. And uh, I, I really thought it was terrific. I thought it made WWE look really good, and Daniel Bryan looked really good. And, um, you know, it was just very sad. And um, I'd actually like to see it on Raw. I, I, I think that it should be showcased more, but I completely understand why WWE is not doing that. They actually posted it on YouTube and made it an unlisted video so only people with the link could see it. Uh, so, you know, clearly they, they don't want to draw too much attention to it because, you know, if they go all out of the way to promote it and put it on television, then people are going to think that it's a publicity stunt and, you know, people will look down on it. So, you know, I, I think they did the right thing. But like I said, I, I think everybody needs to see this video. And if you haven't watched it, um, it's we posted the video on ODQ.com and posted it on Twitter. And, you know, just just do a Google do a Google search and uh, you'll, you'll definitely find that video. All right. This one comes from Rob 6669. Hey, Aaron. I, I was thinking about Batista's return. Do you think it would have worked if they made Ryback going back to his bully gimmick, attacking Ziggler, Ryder, Kofi, and then Batista came back confronting Ryback saying, why don't you face somebody your own size? Honestly, I think that any other idea besides what they did would have resulted in Batista being over as a babyface. I think that Batista was just a victim of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was the guy that was picked to win the Royal Rumble when everybody wanted to see Daniel Bryan in that spot, winning the Royal Rumble and going to WrestleMania in the main event. So, I mean, that that was the situation there. And uh, also the fact that Batista uh, came back and his return got, got spoiled and leaked out. I think if he had returned as a surprise, um, he would have gotten a better reaction too. But Certainly the fact that, that he was the guy and not Daniel Bryan, that, that resulted in the backlash. And uh, any other thing you would have done with him, I think, would have gotten a better response from the fans. Okay, this one comes from Pepsi on TNA. Will RVD ever get in the main event picture again? I think he's a great entertainer. He's just not used well. Well, he's not used well, as you put it, because he is on a part-time schedule. Uh, WWE is not going to put him in a main event level or, or even consider it as long as he's working part time. And uh, basically his role at this point is to help elevate the younger stars. That That's what he's doing. And I, I think he's happy with doing that. You know, he, he's making good money, working a limited schedule, and he's giving back to the business. So, you know, I, I think that he's perfectly fine in the position he's in. And uh, if, if he really wanted to be in the main event picture again, you know, he would commit to a, a longer schedule and, and, and be around more often. But, you know, he, he just wants to be laid back and, you know, go out there and do his thing and, and not get burned out. I mean, that, that's just the way it is. And, it, you know, it, it's, it's his decision. Uh, you know, it's not like WWE's holding him back or anything. All right, this one comes from Wrestling Do 95 Yo, Aaron, what are your thoughts on Low Key making a return to TNA? I'm fine with it. I, I'm a I'm a low key fan, and you know WWE really dropped the ball with him um, when he was on NXT. He seemed to be gaining some momentum, similar to Daniel Bryan, and then uh, they just cut him loose. And um, I do think it might be a little bit too late, though. I think that if TNA had brought him in like right after he left, um, they could have really capitalized on that and um, you know made him a big star. But you know. Several years have passed now, and he hasn't really uh, been a factor in United States wrestling. Um, so it, it, it's going to be hard to him, hard for him to make any kind of um, any kind of impact in TNA, so to speak. So uh, we'll see what happens. But you know, I'm, I'm definitely a fan of of him being around, and he can definitely help uh, work with some of the younger guys in TNA. And we'll see where things go with him. All right, last question here today from Sam Losco. Hey Aaron, what do you think of having pins and submissions inside the cage? I kind of wish they would go back to how it used to be, escape only. I feel having pins and submissions kind of eliminate the whole point of having a cage at all. Well, I'm very old school when it comes to cages. 
I, I really enjoyed the old school cage matches where it was just um, escaping the cage, but guys weren't trying to run away from each other. It was a grudge match. You were trying to settle a score once and for all, and you had two guys that just want to beat the crap out of each other, and then when one guy can no longer go, the other guy makes his way out of the cage when he when he's dealt enough punishment to that guy. And sometimes he comes back and he wants to deliver more, and he, he doesn't want to leave the cage because he, he just doesn't want to stop um, punishing his opponent. So those are the kind of cage matches I enjoyed. I can understand why um, the other stipulations like pinfall and submission were added because you know it, it adds more um, it adds more possibilities and it, it doesn't make the match so predictable. So you, you don't know if the match is going to end by going over the cage or going through the door or pinfall or submission. There's lots of different ways a match can end. And, uh, you know, in, in that regard, it, it makes it a little bit more unpredictable. So, you know, I, I, I can understand either way of doing it. But, yeah, I, I definitely miss the old style cage matches where two guys went in there. The cage was designed to settle a score. You had blood. You didn't have outside interference. You didn't have three guys just interfering in the match constantly. Um, you know, those are the cage matches that I, I really do miss. All right, that'll do it for this edition of No dq &A Video. If you enjoyed it. Please share it, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, whatever site you go on. Uh, spread the word about No DQ and a video. And stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the very latest in WWE and TNA. And uh, vote in the NoDQ.com 2014 King of the Ring Tournament. Uh, NoDQ.com slash polls. A new poll is going up every day. And I will see you guys next time for another edition of No DQ and a video.